Welcome to another episode of I'm Tied to Church, and today I want to talk about um, the church building and why do we as believers put some type of reverence upon it. Many people do say, yeah, it's just a building, but then on Sunday, for some reason, that building transforms into something else. When you walk in there, your behavior changes. If you were cursing, Right before you walk through those doors, suddenly you're not cursing no more. It's as if there's something special about a church building. And we have done that, and we have also, that same mentality has even affected the people who don't believe in Christ. If you bring a friend who doesn't believe in God to church for some reason, They'll feel like, uh, I need to be quiet here, I can't curse, I can't do this, I need to sh respect the place. Um, a person who, for example, let's say hates God, might burn a building thinking they're doing something to hurt God. Because they look at this building and we have allowed them to believe that this building is something sacred. And it's not. It's just brick and mortar. There's nothing important about it. The presence of God is not there. But not in your house, you know, you have like, it's there, but not in my house. I need to go to church, I need to get refueled. You can't invite the Holy Spirit to come to your church on Friday night at 7 o'clock. As if you have to make some type of appointment. God dwells within you. It's impossible for you to say, I felt the presence of God in this building. I feel the presence of God here. That's psychological, and preachers will yell that. I feel the presence of God, do you feel it? And you, of course, with your hands up, want to say, I feel it, I feel it. And you might make yourself feel something, but in reality, the presence of God is not more powerful there than He is in your house. And you know what it's like? It'll remind me of, let's say, for example, tomorrow, the Jewish people find the Ark of the Covenant. The original official Ark of the Covenant. There's no doubt about it. We found it. It was hidden underground. We we excavated it, and here it is. The Jews are gonna be like, "Wow, it's holy. It's let's take this thing and let's let's do something." I mean, it's gonna be like a big thing for them, right? And you might even have evangelical Christians who are gonna write books. The prophecy has been fulfilled, and create some phony prophecy being fulfilled, which is silly. But people would buy that dumb stuff. So anyway. The Jews find this Ark of the Covenant. Suddenly, it's holy to them. And Christians might, might even be, let's go watch it, let's go look at it. And then when they go look at it in Jerusalem, let's say it's in Jerusalem. Wow, I felt the, the power of God, you can feel it there. And you can't. It's a piece of gold. Give it to me, I need, I need a storage locker. Because that's what it is now. It's garbage. The only value it has is the gold. Melt it, I need some gold teeth. Because it's garbage. If you find the Ark of the Covenant, it is garbage. For you to say, oh, it's a holy thing. No, it's not. It's not a holy thing. It's a collectible item. It is useless. It is worthless. Because when Christ died, the veil was torn. God's presence no longer dwells in the temple only. Or in the Ark of the Covenant. There's nothing sacred about it. It's garbage. Use it for a footstool. Use it for a collectible item. Use it for whatever you want. But don't think for a moment it's a special thing. So that's what we do with the church. We somehow have to look at something. So when you, we, we are so used to not trusting in our faith and what God has said that we have to look at a building and say, wow. And we do the same thing with, with relics. If you have a cross, you're afraid to break it because you think something there's something special about a cross. It's just a cross. Chuck it. Big deal. You know, Christ didn't come to give you all these relics and attachments and, and these these uh, sex accessories you 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 follow these things that you can go to church. This is sacred. At the, I gotta go to the altar call. I gotta no no. I'm gonna make a series about the history of a lot of things we practice. Okay, I'm gonna make a little short series. Uh, this is gonna be very very um, very enlightening, very educational. Now I'm not saying for people who go to church don't go. Yeah, go. But what I'm saying is don't think for a moment, by you going, something special is going to happen. Okay? That's what I'm saying. By you going, nothing special is going to happen because you're going into this building. God does not dwell in temples made by hands. 
He dwells within you. And until you start living that and realizing that, it's like, wow, I am the temple. You are the Ark of the Covenant. That's what you are. You are your worship. No longer do they have to burn sacrifices and incense. No, your worship is an incense. It goes up to God. Your prayer goes up to God. You don't have to go to church to go to the front to pray by the special guest who came and he could put his hands on you and now God's listening to you. That's psychological. The truth is, you can pray to God now where you're at at all times. And it's the same exact thing. But we somehow have to use our eyes. We want to see something. We're like, we're like the Israelites who told Moses, hey, what did God say? Make a golden calf. We have to touch and see. We have to trust our five senses. And it's so difficult to trust that last sixth sense, your spirit. It's hard because you can't see nothing. So it's hard for you to say, I know God's here. Right now as I speak to you on this video, I know God's here. But you have to go to a church for some reason and feel God's presence there. It's like the, Jew, the, the, the Catholics who go to the Vatican. They feel like something special. Peter's bones or whatever reason. The Vatican is nothing. It's just a pretty building. I would like to go just to see how pretty it is. But not to think for one moment God's going to be there. More than he's going to be on the flight there or in the hotel room or in my body. He's in us. We're kind of like, I heard this one guy say, we're like fish in a fish tank. Okay, the water is in the fish and the fish is in the water. This is how we are. This is how God is within us. But we somehow, if we were that fish and we see that, we would look outside the fish tank and see a small little cup of water. Since we can see that, because the fish can't see that he's in the water, because the water's in him, he can't see it. But he would look outside the fish tank and see a small little cup of water. And that fish might try to get near it. Oh, I want to get in that water. That's where, that's where the special water's at. Not realizing you're in the water and the water's already in you. What, do you. what else do you need? No, I need to get in that. No, there is no getting in that. Christ died for God to be within you. And we know that. We say it all the time, but we don't live it. We don't believe it. God is within us. God is not in your church building on Sundays as if you made an appointment with him. Okay? Now when you go to church, I'm not saying, when I say God is not there, he's there because he's within you. He's not there because it's a church building. Okay, I'm not saying go to church, God's not there. Of course, God is everywhere. The fish is in the water and the water is in the fish. I think that was from uh, L. Ray Smith as the guy's name. He said something like that. But it makes sense. It makes sense. So go to church if you want to, and that's great. Or don't if you don't. But don't think for a moment, me not going to church means, oh man, I sure miss the presence of God. You got the presence of God. It's within you. Understand that. It's so hard to get away from our eyes and our five senses that we become discouraged because people who don't go to church are looked down upon from those that do go to church. And even if you say, no, I don't go to church, but I pray at home. They don't believe that. You don't pray at home. Oh, I study the Bible on my own. <sighs> you're right. Liar. For some reason, if you're not going to our church with us, you're not as spiritual. Oh, I worship at home. I sing a few songs on my own. As I'm walking on the streets, I'm singing a praise through my heart, a hymn. <sighs> yeah, sure. You don't do that. You need to come listen to the music director. No. God is within us. And we're within God. You don't need to go to a building to get the presence of God. When Christ died, that veil was torn. And it eliminated that necessity to have a mediator between you and God. Right? We didn't have to have a man, Moses or, or Jacob, whoever these guys, Old Testament guys were. Now, you have one mediator, Christ. And Christ is within you. God bless you. Don't ever forget that what Jesus Christ did was enough. Trust your sixth sense. God bless you.